Hey all you rabid Lions fans, welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the prowl, and today on the menu we have Jeff Okuda, boom or bust. I know he's young yet and everything like this, but he is not really living up to expectations of the third overall pick, so we're going to look at that today, and who's at the table today? Dosa Dion joins us for a few good minutes today at the table, and now I'm going to bring in my tag team partner. The Man of Steel, the Man of the Hour, Kurt Steel. Hey, what's going on? You know what today is? It is Two Piece Victory Tuesday. We got two in a row, people. So, hey, you know it's got to be good when the Lions win two in a row. But do us a favor. Watch this video all the way to the end so it improves our YouTube algorithm so more fire... uh, so, So more Lions fans like yourself can get video content from us right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. And as always, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you know when you get more content from us right here on our show. The show, it's time to start the show right Right now. now. Hey, welcome back to the show. It is time for our question of the day. The question is, will Jeff Okuda struggling in the secondary, do you think he will become a top five shutdown corner in the NFL? Again, question of the day, with his early struggles in the secondary, will Jeff Okuda become a top five shutdown corner in his career? Now, with that, we're going to go to the responses from yesterday. Jim, take it away. Yeah, we got some responses from yesterday's video, and Dr. Detroit says the doctor knows his stuff. He's talking about Jimmy Liao, and he says, We screwed Stafford by not getting a line soon enough. At 33, you think he's getting sharper, better, and healthier? Tom Brady has not taken a tenth of the hits that Stafford has from one doctor to another. (laughs) That's pretty cool. He calls himself Dr. Detroit, so he's Mm -hmm. Dr. Jimmy Liao, who is our resident doctor. injury report expert on uh, the injuries that happened and he's going to be doing our pain train thing coming up what else we got kurt hey prime time b says love this show jim he says kurt bring him the detroit swagger uh keep (laughs) it up fellas oh man (laughs) thank you very much man and go ahead close it out jim yeah, Charles Dirksen says, Patricia gets fired, who should be our next coach? We kind of covered this, but I would, I'd would i lean toward, if we could just choose a coach, I'm kind of leaning towards Jim Harbaugh or Eric Bieniemy. I, I agree with that the same. Okay. Okay, hey, now it is time for the Who's at the Table segment, and it's a good one today. This young fella brings a lot of energy and a lot of good content on his channel, so... Take it away, Jim, and Dose of Dion. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the interview. Who's at the table? And who's at the table today but Dose of Dion 2.0? Hey, dude, what's up, man? Hey, man, what's going on? Super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, super excited to have two wins in a row. It's kind of called a winning streak and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's not normal in Detroit. I'm loving it, though. Yeah, I am, too. How do you feel about the Lions winning these two games in a row against trash teams? Do you think, have you opinion, has your opinion of this team changed, stayed the same, or are you starting to drink some Kool-Aid? I mean, how how, how are you on the Kool-Aid scale here? How Uh, much have you had? Hey, man, I drink Kool-Aid every morning. You can see it's already empty here. <laughs> Before we get on. <laughs> yeah, it was gone. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, so, I mean, I think the last, like, I, I felt like when they were one and three, obviously I was a, a little bit worried. But I, I, I just, I felt like they were better than the record. I just felt like they were, they could have been more competitive in some games. And I just, you know, the first four games were difficult. I think any team that has that first four schedule is tough. And I think the last two, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm, like, shocked they won, but it, it, it feels good to just, like, reinforce the fact that I think, you know, they could beat the teams they're supposed to beat. I mean, that's what I've been That is a big a thing, time. though. I Huge. mean, it is a big thing. Caldwell did that. He did that. Right, he was like, right. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat the teams that I'm supposed to beat, and, uh, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, let yeah. the chips fall where they may. And he did really well with that idea. Right. Did right. well in the division, do well against people that you're supposed to beat. You know, yep, that's a 100. pretty good formula for success. What do you think about Kenny Galladay? Is he going to get paid? Are they going to trade him? Or are they going to let him walk? What do you think? Oh, man, I, I really want to see him get paid. I, I don't I don't know. It's because I, th- I think it's up in the air just with the front offices up in the air as well. You know, the coaching staff. But personally, I, I, I'm paying this guy like I, I don't. I understand, you know, he's going to be at Tate big money. I think he's worth big money. If we don't pay him, somebody will. I mean, I someone's going to give him the big money because I just think he's worth it. I understand, like, maybe giving a receiver isn't something that every coach wants to do, and maybe that's not something that if Patricia's here that he wants to do. But Bob Quinn drafted him, and I, I just – I don't know. It, the offense is different. I mean, you can just – the offense is just way better than on the field. It's clearly Stafford's go-to. He feels comfortable going to him. It's not the Kelvin level, but it's the closest thing we have. It's like – you know, he, he, it makes a big difference when he's out it's, there. Totally get you on that one. Do you yeah. think that? I mean, but do you think they will pay him? I mean, it's a weird year, though. I mean, these guys, they may be, they may not be here. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? That's, that's why it's so tough. I it really is. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough to answer. And then with Quinn, I feel like you just you never know who he's going to pay, right? It's like sometimes he doesn't pay a guy that you think he'd pay, and then you know you bring in this. New and then guy there's and a Taylor Decker and... issue. Yeah, I get it. Right, right. So, <laughs> I I don't know. I I would lean. I mean, at this point in the season, it's it's getting to the point where you're thinking maybe they won't do it. But I, I I'm gonna say they. I would pay him. I, I think they should pay him. I, that's just where I am on that. I, I just think the guy deserves the money. He deserves the money. And I have no problem paying a big receiver if that means, especially if Stafford's gonna be part of your future, because the the difference this offense is with him without him is it's just crazy. It's crazy. So I think if you're gonna have Stafford and if these guys are your future and you know, you know, Matt Patricia and Quinn, Quinn can earn an extra year, at least one more. I think it makes sense to pay him, you know, keep his weapon there and and uh, go win now, you know, more of a win now approach than anything. Yeah, I get that. Another one, quick hitting going on here now. Uh, Jeff Okuda, Buster, boom. Uh, what do you think about the kid? Oof, man, Okuda, I, I like him. I, I like his mindset. I love the dude's hitting, man. I It's just something I love to see corners. I love to see him come up and hit. Monty's doing it as well. That's my favorite part of his game. He just, he seems like just the way he moves, he just seems everything's so technical with him. I mean, he he makes mistakes. I was watching him earlier, actually, from the last game, just kind of slipping over and tripping over himself and just falling. Like, you can tell he's not completely smooth and polished yet, but but he's, he's really works on what he wants to do. You know, he really works on, he watches the tape and, he just seems super locked in. I just he's not there yet and I he's been thrown into the fire completely. He's not ready yet, but I mean, if we're being honest, he's looked better to me than True Fine. And True Fine's had a smaller sample size, but I think he's been better than him this year. So, I think everyone's been better than him this year. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> that's true. Do. That's true. That's it's, that's it's tough to true. play when you're not on the field. It really is. Right. And right. and when he's on the field, I, I see him making a lot of mistakes too. I get yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, that he's, makes perfect he looks slow. Sense. He, he looks yeah, really that, slow to that me. Is, that is a symptom of the defense. Uh, Jelani Tavai looks really slow. There, there's a mm. few people in that defense that look way too slow for the positions that they're in. Uh, yeah. What do you think about this defense? They have a run, the run defense looked better. The pass defense looks normal. Um, that's not really good. But, you know, um, what do you think going forward? Yeah, uh, I, I've been very, very pleased with the defense in the last two weeks. Coming out of the bye week, it's – I mean, really, after the Packers game, the run defense seemingly is getting a little bit better. But out of the bye week, they just seem to have some kind of different energy about it. And it's it's all started with the run game. I mean, the last two weeks, I know it's not the best teams, but they can run the football. The Falcons, not so much. The Jaguars can run the ball. And, you know, that's just kind of where it starts. And they just seemingly come out with big energy. I think Penasini has been huge. He I think Penasini's role has just – it's exploded. Him and Shelton together. I mean, I'm, well, I'm surprised Shelton's how well Shelton's big playing. boy, man. When you yeah. first watching him and- – <laughs> I don't know whether it's the color rush jerseys or what, but that dude looked like they couldn't make a jersey for him big enough, I don't think. I don't know what's going on there. He's a big man. Holy gosh. Yes, yes. That's, I mean, you got They're like not movable. Pounds, Either man. one of those guys, you can't move them off the ball. You just no, can't. no. It's great. I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. I, it's taken a big leap. Of mm-hmm. course, they got a long way to go, but I, I think if you can stop the run, you can compete with anybody because, yeah. you, you know, you, you can. Patricia has more freedom to dial up and unlin to dial up pressures and different looks if he knows that you can get him in third down situations but you give up six yards of carry there's not a lot you can do with it because it's kind of just you're just gonna it run the ball and run around the ball yeah it's just like all right you only need 10 yards for a first down so yeah uh, can't you really get do six anything. of them carry you only got two 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 uh, yeah. tries at it two, that's all take down. yeah right okay i'm gonna get you out on this one real quick um what do you what is your prediction for the rest of the season do they make the playoffs or do they not 
Ah, mm. uh, you know, hey man, I told y'all I came in here drinking the Kool Aid, so I'm gonna keep drinking it. I, I, th- I think they can make the playoffs, man. I like the okay. 17s getting in. I think they're, a li- I think they're a wild card team. Like I look at them now as a team that can contend for a wild card spot. I mean, I don't know if division is super realistic at this point. Just, I just don't see the Packers slipping up many times. Yeah. And I think the Bears may slow down. I don't see the Packers slowing down that much though. But I, I think agree. they can make the playoffs. I mean, it, they I got mean, a nice big win over the Rogers Cardinals. Injury again. I yeah, think that, <laughs> right, no, seriously, right. I think that's the only way they go down there. They look really good right now, unfortunately. But, yeah, uh, yeah Bears, I agree. The Bears look suspect to me. They have from the beginning. And yeah. my wife's a Bears fan, so you, you got to bear with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But I appreciate you being here, man. Oh, man. I, say, say where people can find you and stuff, uh, parting shots, whatever you want to say right now. Floor is yours. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you guys can find me on YouTube, Dose of Dion 2.0. It's it's the same. Well, actually, Twitter's different. It's like zero Dose of Dion. I'm not sure why it's that, but Instagram, Dose of Dion 2.0. So just pretty much every platform. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you, man, for doing this. And uh, check out Dose of Dion. He's got some really good stuff. He makes like six videos a day. And um, I mean, he's, he's just crazy. I can't even, I could do one and I get exhausted. So it's, it's just <laughs> nuts. But anyway, yeah, thanks yeah. a lot, man, for doing this. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you, bud. Thank you. What an interview with Dosa Dion. My man keeps it real. Go over and check out his channel. Subscribe. Uh, he brings some good content over there on his YouTube page. And let's take a look at the main course. Jeff Okuda. Mm-hmm. Boom or bust. We compare the corners drafted in the first round of the 2020 draft. Now, first up, my man Jim, take it away. Yeah, I'm going to go over Jeff Okuda, and we're only going to go over a few things uh, on Mm -hmm. him. He has only played five games. He's only started four games, but he has one interception, 29 targets, his completion percentage, and what that means is how many times they've completed a pass on him is 75.9%. That's not very good for a total of 319 yards. So the yards per completion on him is 14.5. So... (sighs) It comes out to an average of 11 yards per target. So that's quite a bit. Uh, He hasn't done extremely well. I haven't got into pass defenses and all that stuff. What we're looking at is completion percentage, the yards, uh, you know, that he's given up in the amount of games that he's had. And Kurt's going to go over the ninth round pick here, uh, C.J. Henderson. All right. C.J. Henderson, the ninth overall pick. Um plays down there in uh in maybe Jacksonville. Yep, okay. Jacksonville. Uh Henderson. Yeah, cornerback um completion percentage is 64.3. Um he's giving up two touchdowns. Uh the quarterback rating is a 94.0 for the opposing quarterbacks on him. Uh tackles he's got 29 combined tackles, so um he's playing decent but still um it's still comparable to uh to to Okuda. Uh the, the completion percentage is better, but the quarterback rating is not. Yeah. Uh what I look for what I look for here, I'm gonna go with AJ Terrell, and he plays for the Atlanta Falcons. We just seen him not too long ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was picked sixteenth overall. So the completion percentage, if it, it the higher it goes, the worse it is. Okay, so the lower mm-hmm. it goes, the better it is, because that's the completion percentage yeah. against the corner. So mm-hmm. his uh, he's played five games. He started all five. He has an interception. Um, he's been targeted mm-hmm. 20 times. They completed it 17 times on him. So to compare, 22 for Okuda, uh, or 29 targets for Okuda, 22 completions on Okuda. Uh, 85% mm-hmm. is A.J. Terrell's completion percentage. He's given up 240 mm-hmm. 204 yards yards per completion is 12 and he is uh, a 10.2 yard per target person he's given up two touchdowns so yeah i think okuda is better than this guy uh he mm-hmm. was ranked 16th overall but okuda is playing better than him so we're going to go to kurt for damon arnett and he damon plays arnett, for the, Las the Vegas raiders. raiders the raiders All right. he was uh the 10th overall pick um in the draft uh, coming out of college, plays for the Raiders. Looking at its uh, completion percentage, uh, at 81%. Uh, he's been a targeted 11 times with nine completions, which isn't you know a high rate of uh, completion. But he's only played three games. Three games uh, started three. So 
he's not going to have as many targets as the other uh, gentlemen that we've mentioned so far. Uh, completion of yards is 12.2 per attempt. The uh, yards per target is uh, right at 10. Quarterback rating is 108.3. I think if you add a couple of more games to uh, his his uh, his stats, I think he'll be right at the same numbers or probably a little bit worse than Okuda. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And it, the fact that he hasn't played as many games either, and, he, and you know, uh, mm-hmm. that te- that says something too, that he hasn't started very many games. Maybe it was an injury. Mm-hmm. I don't really know. Um, I'm mm-hmm. going with, uh, this is a very tough name. I'm going to try it though. Noah Igbenogane mm-hmm. is the 30th okay. overall pick. He plays for the Miami uh, what they have football in Miami? Oh yeah, Dolphins. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That was horrible. That was absolutely bad. He's yeah. only played. He's had ten games. He's only started two. He's been targeted twenty-two times. Really? Wow. No interceptions. They've only completed thirteen of those twenty-two. So he has a fifty-nine point one completion percentage, which is actually mm-hmm. better than Okuda. He has two hundred eighty-two mm-hmm. yards, twenty-one point seven yards per completion. So he's at a twelve point eight. Uh, yards per target, but he's had three touchdowns on him. Yeah, out of those, that's uh, the issue. Out of those well, things, so yeah, I would have to say that he's probably worse than Okuda that way because Okuda hasn't given up a touchdown yet that I'm aware yeah. of. So, yeah, uh, uh, a one forty three quarterback rating is it stands out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now we're gonna go to Jeff Gladney. He is from the Minnesota Vikings, and Kurt yeah. took that one away. Hey, he's played uh, six games, uh, started five of them. He's got thir- uh, 33 targets with 24 uh, uh, completions with a 72-point completion rate, 342 yards, uh, 14.3 yards completion. Um, he's given up three touchdowns as well. Um, a quarterback rating of 136.2. Um, still comparable to uh, Okuda. You look at the numbers. Um Completion percentage is around around that you know yeah, favor you know close. that same it's is very very close, um, but he's given up three a, touchdowns. That's three the touchdowns is, is the is the difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely say this. Um, uh, everyone kind of gets down into Kuda because he's the he's the number three overall pick, but he's playing comparable to the guys that were drafted with him. Yeah, I mean, he is. First, I mean, he's playing comparable to those guys. So everyone's not going to be a Deion Sanders coming out of school. That that's a generational talent. You know, you can't compare him. You can't compare to a Patrick Peterson because he's not Patrick Peterson. Is it something where and he has different circumstances than those guys? If you look at it coming in as a as a rookie in the NFL, you see how important that the OTAs are and rookie minicamps yes. is mm-hmm. coming into the season. Now, will I, am I giving him in time for excuses? No. But he's playing comparable to the guys that he was drafted with. So I won't say none of these guys are far and away super better than, than Jeff Okuda. Yeah, I'm I'm in agreement with you. When I looked at this, I was kind of surprised because when I went, went to deep dive into it, I thought we would have some of the other guys a lot better than Okuda. I don't think that's the case. Uh, he hasn't given up a touchdown, which is a key. He has had some drops on uh, and when they've been throwing to him his way, so that does increase his completion percentage a little bit. But overall, I think he's done well. The only problem I have with Okuda versus like a Dion or somebody like that is mm-hmm. that he doesn't kick return. He doesn't return punts. He, all he does is play corner. So be, to be drafted at that number three pick, you need to be better than all these other corners by a lot. And he's not at, at this stage. True. But the thing That's is, I think that I think that he, uh, I think that he's going to be all right. I, I do, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And, and want to know your thoughts on Jeff Okuda and put your thoughts in. And I know it's really early to judge him. I mean, you can't judge a guy on six games. But if you're third overall, you're expected to come out like gangbusters. And corner mm-hmm. is the toughest position, one of the toughest positions to learn. Yeah. So we got to give our kid a break. We got to support our guy. I think that he's going to be just fine. And I think he's actually going to show up as a shutdown corner eventually. Uh, he may even move to safety. He could be a really, really good he safety. He could really be good. So yeah, I think that a, could be a problem too. Yeah, he has a size for it as well. Um, he does. Yeah. But hey, you know, 
you know what time it is. We didn't ate the main course. We didn't drink the Kool Aid. It's time for our dessert. Yes, and big is. shout out. Go over to the Lions Twitter page and look at their profile picture. They superimpose Matthew Stafford's face, and this is a, a, a photo that many Lions players have shared on uh, Instagram, where it's the guy that has a big white fur coat on. He's got the yeah, I've seen the that. Out. That is the actual <laughs> Lions Twitter avatar right now. Wow. The Detroit Lions. Wow. <laughs> hey, their, their Twitter page. That's their he's got a white fur coat and he's yeah, pimping, man. The ring. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we know, you know, that Matthew Stafford is the comeback kid and he had his 30th, 30th game winning uh, yes. drive yesterday uh, yes. with a touchdown. That is only second to who? Since 2009, it's second to the guy was across the field wow. yesterday, Matt, Matt Ryan. Ryan. So oh. that's my dessert for the day. He, he bested his best friend out there on the field. But go over to Detroit Lions Twitter page and check out the avatar. It is awesome. Big <laughs> shout out to the comeback kid leading the cardiac cats one more time to victory. And like I always say yesterday, I'll always take a Lions win, ugly or not. I'll take a win over a loss any day. I will too. Kurt's dessert was absolutely awesome today. You do such a good job with that segment. That is so fun. And uh, my thoughts for today, I I think Okuda is going to be okay, like I said. I think we need to give the kids some time. I think that uh, there's too many Lions fans that are so critical on people that are just coming out right away. They need to make a splash right away because the rest of our guys are so bad, usually. I think that's why. <laughs> but if you could do us all a favor, and number one, watch the video all the way through. We try to put segments in there so you're not bored to death, you know, <laughs> things like that. And if you're here right now, guess what? You did it. You got almost to the end. We appreciate each and every single one of you. We appreciate everything you do to support our channel. And Kurt, take us home. Hey, as always, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you know when you're getting fresh content from us right here on Detroit Lions on the Proud. And as always, me and my man Jim want you to, whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of yourself that you can be. For my man, Jim, this is Kurt Steele for Detroit Lions on the Prowl, and we will holler at you real soon. <laughs>